Welcome back to another Monster Hunter Rise tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the hammer. This is a very fun weapon to use and it's definitely improved over the years. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so the first thing that we need to look at for this weapon is it is a blunt weapon, meaning every attack is going to do stun damage if it hits the head. There is not a single attack from this weapon that is not going to be able to do stun damage. That's kind of the entire weapon's kit is just hitting the head and that's kind of the only priority that you're going to have in any team. So let's go ahead and put the head down and then we can knock out the tetra really quick and like i said in the, the certain shield video that yellow electricity star looking thing when you hit the head is going to be stun damage so first things first our y attacks are going to be overhead smashes with an upswing and then we have our side smash which we can then go into our big bane series so big bang one two three and then the finisher. We don't have any YB attacks. Right trigger is going to charge your hammer, and just like the rate sword, there are three different charge levels and a few different charge attacks that we can do. So let's go ahead and look at those. So at the first level, we're just gonna do a basic side of blow. And from there, we can actually hit Y to do a follow-up. On the second level, we can do an uppercut. And finally, at the third level, there are two different options. We have the stationary charge big bang. Or, we have the Spinning Bludgeon as our moving charge attack, and that has a few different options as well. So, let's look at the first option. Cutting it off as soon as it starts, we're going to release the charge while moving and hit Y immediately. And that will stop the charge spin just like that. Our next option is going to be cut it off early instead of immediately, and that'll just be hit Y during the first few swings. The third option is going to be a charged up swing, and it's going to be on the second half of the spinning. As you can see, a strong up swing. And the final option is to just do nothing and let it swing out. If we hit B whilst charging, we can enter our charge switch, and that is going to give us some different moves that might be better based on the situation. Again, the first one is going to be a side blow with a power swing, the second one is going to be a strong uppercut, and the final one is going to be that big bang finisher that we were talking about earlier. The moving charge attack at level 3 is going to be a step smash. Now, whilst you are in your charge mode, if you want to disengage, you can just hit B to disengage and then move into your charge attacks from there. Your charge attacks are going to be doing the most damage outside your silk binds, and your big bang is also going to be hitting pretty hard, so make sure to do those when you are waiting for wirebug cooldowns. So now let's go ahead and look at some of the switch skills. So, now we have a few different options. So our side blow is now going to be a water strike. From the water strike, we can still move into our big bang. The charge attack is going to remain the same on the normal type, but the charge switch is going to turn to courage. This is going to give you a little bit longer charge time, but it's going to let you chain different charge attacks. So on the first one, we have a charge side blow, which we can also follow up with a second attack. We can then immediately move into another charge for level 2, which is an upswing, and then we can move into level 3. The final switch skill that we need to talk about is going to be the spinning bludgeon switch skill. So the normal spinning bludgeon is going to turn into a charge spinning bludgeon. We are no longer going to be spinning around and have a bunch of options but we are going to now charge our attacks. So, after using the Spinning Bludgeon, it is actually just going to enhance our charge switch attacks. That is Courage and Strength. So be sure to use your Spinning Bludgeon Charge if you are going to be using your, your charge switch more often than your normal charge mode. Let's go ahead and talk about our Silk Binds. So we have the Spinning Bludgeon and the Impact Crater first, and then we'll go through the Dash Breaker, Impact Burst, and the Keeping Sway. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the Silk Binds really quick. So. Some of the veterans will remember this attack. This will be the charge slide, and you are going to go into a midair spinning bludgeon. Pretty fun attack. It's something that you would spam, especially in like the Coral Highlands and anywhere that had a hill, really, that you could use this. You would absolutely abuse this in the Monster Hunter world. The Silkbind spinning bludgeon is going to be just that. You are going to launch yourself into the air, and if you notice, you can charge your hammer while you are waiting. So if you go ahead and activate the silk bind and then hold down right trigger, you will enter the charging. And as long as you have the stamina to keep up with it, you can hold this and charge up. So 
As you can see, I do have an infinite stamina mod on for the video, so you won't see my stamina going down, but every charge attack is going to be taking our stamina away. So, again, activate the silk bind, and then you only need to hold down right trigger. You don't need to hold left trigger or Y or whatever that translates to on your controls. You just need the charge button. You can release whenever you're ready. The other piece we need to look at is impact crater. This is going to hit a few times, and I've actually tried to make it hit the fourth time, but I cannot get it to do it on the training tetra. So if you go ahead and look, we will hit one, two, three, and the third hit is going to be wherever the hammer hits the monster. There's actually a fourth hit that's not being shown, I'm not sure why that is, but it doesn't like to show itself on this training dummy. So whenever your hammer hits the monster on this third attack, the place the hammer hits the ground is going to be where your fourth hitbox lands. So one, two, three, and as you can see, I did actually get the fourth hit just there. I've tried that so many times and I could not get it to work, so I'm glad I was actually recording that. That crater is just going to do a lot of damage, and it does take quite a bit to pull off, so make sure you have some time to do that. Let's go ahead and look at our dash breaker and our impact burst. So dash breaker is going to be another one just like the midair spinning bludgeon where we can actually activate it and then hold our charge. Now this is going to be another good one because it's going to maintain our charge level whilst we are doing this and it'll actually allow us to move through attacks. So keeping sway is going to be an evasive maneuver and all it's going to do is move us out of the way whilst maintaining a charge level. So if you notice, one, two, and charge level three, I can now keep in sway and I will still be at level three. Now. The final thing we need to talk about is Impact Burst. This is one of those passive buffs for the weapon, so we're going to wrap our weapon in Silk. And this is just going to make it so that every charge attack is going to make the monster flinch a little bit easier. Remember, every charge attack is going to take stamina away as we hold the charge, and every attack on this weapon is going to be doing blunt damage. That's about all for the moves, let's go ahead and look at some of the skills. Okay, so to start off, we actually need to talk about Stamina Thief and the Slugger skill really quick, because I did misinform you guys a little bit back in my Monster Hunter World tutorials, so if you did watch those, be sure to pay attention here really quick. I, and it seems like quite a few other people, were under the impression that Hunting Horns did more exhaust damage and the Hammer did more stun damage. This is partially true, but it's not a significant amount, and there are some other factors that we need to look at really quick. So I posted this to Reddit, and this is what I got back. Now, if you know anything about my experience with Monster Hunter, I loved Monster Hunter 3U and Try. So I played a lot of the third generation, and this is kind of when those misconceptions and stuff were floating around. Silverbullet474 on Reddit says, You read this a long time ago because it was technically true several games ago. Or actually, I should say that it comes from a few misconceptions slash misunderstandings that were shared around a lot back in the third generation. The numbers tend to change between titles. If you're talking about the most recent games, Hammer and Hunting Horn have different moves with more or less KO and Exhaust damage than others. What matters is how often both weapons use said move. In Sunbreak, Hammer has a lot more burst KO attacks that it uses frequently, so it'll usually KO faster on average. Hunting Horn has a few burst KO moves, but those are silk binds, so they don't come out quite as often. Its KO output is spread out across all attacks. Exhaust is a tricky one. Both weapons are more or less even. Hunting Horn technically has a bit more output, but not nearly enough to be all that worth mentioning. It is not even the best exhausting weapon. That title belongs to the Switch Axe and the Bowguns. Quoting a piece that I said all blunt damage does exhaust and all blunt slash exhaust damage to the head is stun damage. That was also something that I had gotten from a few other members of the community. They said, not quite. Blunt, slashing, shot, and typeless are damage categories that the game uses to calculate the damage different attacks do to different hit zones. Attacks can then have stun values and exhaust values. Those are separate numbers from each other, and those aren't always tied to blunt attacks. For example, charge blade, impact files, and sticky bowgun ammo. Meaning that those are not blunt weapons, but they still do stun damage. So you can use Stamina Thief on the hammer and Slugger on the hunting horn and have them still be viable. That being said, Stamina Thief is going to give you 40% more exhaust power, and again, exhaust is going to be anywhere on the monster's body, and it's going to give you special flinch animations as well as the drooling animation that'll hold it in place for a few extra hits. The Slugger skill is going to give you up to 40% stun power. That is going to be good for knocking out the monster, and that's about all it is going to do. And since every charge attack takes stamina, some of the stamina skills between Constitution, which is going to reduce the fix stamina like evading, stamina surge which is going to increase stamina recovery by up to 40%, 
and Marathon Runner, which is going to reduce the Continuous Stamina Depletion, which is charging your weapon by 50%. These are all very good ones to use, but if I had to recommend one, I would say Marathon Runner, since charging your weapon is going to take a lot of stamina, and you're almost always going to want to be using charge attacks on the hammer. And this is only a 3-point skill in comparison to Constitution's 5-point skill, so I definitely recommend either Marathon Runner or the Stamina Surge to get your stamina back a little bit quicker. Now the other one that's a pretty important skill on this, but it's probably not used as much as it should be, is Focus. This is going to charge your charge attacks 15% faster, and that can make a pretty big difference for the hammer, so do be sure to check that out and see if it's something you want to use. But that about does it for the skills. I highly recommend running Slugger and Focus if you can get it in, as well as a Stamina skill if you want to build comfortably. And that's going to do it for the hammer guide. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll go ahead and see you in the next one.